Welcome course takers to section number seven, surviving failure on a global scale. So in this last section, we're going to look at what we've built, understand the impact of that on our users and our developers. And then we'll look at something that we haven't really touched on, which is the operational impact. What do you need to do to survive large scale failures in a distributed global application? So if you're ready, let's get started. So welcome to video number one. It's a review of the global architecture and what we've built to utilize that architecture. So we'll cover the infrastructure, state management, the developer tools, the CICD pipeline, and we'll look at all of that and what we've done and the stages in which we've done it. So if you're ready, let's get started. So thinking about the infrastructure, well, we started with our on-premise data center with a single network and a single VMware cluster. The first step we did was try and bring out some additional reliability availability through a second availability zone. So we built out a new VPC with two availability zones. We put the subnets in there, but we kept an eye on security by making sure that we built three tiers of security groups, one for the database, one for the application, and one for the internet and the public load balancers. We then duplicated that into a second region using Ireland, and we set up VPC peering, which allowed us to network the two VPCs together. So every step forward, we're adding resilience, we're adding security layers, and we're making sure that we think about reliability at every step. Same thing for applied for state. So we started with a single Postgres server running on the same server as the application. So we deployed a managed service, which Amazon will help us manage that service and look after certain key aspects of it also gave us a multi-AZ capability out the box so we could have a standby and a failover server and we didn't need to care from an application point of view we just had a single DNS name and then we rolled that out to a second region using read replicas we also looked at Aurora which would give us a much more scalable platform much more reliable platform with automated failover across multiple AZs and also the ability to use multi-region deployments now whether or not we'd actually use that I don't know if our application would be suitable enough to support you know the high throughput that something like aurora would give us and the associated costs with that so i think you know if we were taking this forward in a real use case we'd probably stick with postgres rds because that's probably the most cost effective solution for what we're doing with relatively low reads and writes but you never know so that's why we covered aurora and in compute terms we started with a single vmware cluster we moved that into containers and we deployed that on ECS, which handled the scheduling, the health of those containers, allowed us to deploy that across any number of nodes, generate a number of replicas and manage that state. And then we looked again to duplicate that setup in a second region. And we could have done exactly the same on EKS. ECS obviously gave us a very flexible way to get started. And then when we started looking at the tools and support that Kubernetes gives us, EKS is probably where we'd end up with particularly if you wanted to do any development on-premise as well, and we wanted a similar environment, maybe replacing our expensive VMware cluster with a Kubernetes alternative. And then finally, the stuff we did for the developers. So we started from a viewpoint of very few tests, Kevin and Ian doing a lot of manual testing and doing manual deployments. And we leveraged AWS's CICD technology, code commit as a repository, code build to build and test the code, and pipeline to orchestrate it all. We didn't really look at code deploy, but if you want to deploy raw code, then that's an option as well. We started from a point of not having really any monitoring. You know, Kevin and Ian were looking at supporting it. We're looking at supporting the application and we pushed all our metrics, including our API metrics into CloudWatch, all our logs into CloudWatch, and we could build comprehensive dashboards, SLI and SLI and SLA type dashboards from all that information. And finally, our number one concern from security was, well, there's no authentication or authorization. We built a high auth module that sat at, that used Cognito on the back end and took away a lot of the complexity of having to build our own authentication authorization service. So I think you can agree we've done an awful lot. We've got a much more resilient, reliable solution from an infrastructure point of view, from a code delivery point of view. We've got a much more automated process, hopefully reducing errors, allowing us to do more complex, more interesting deployment types.